Many times in life we find ourselves comparing two or more similar things to see which one is better. For example, we have speedy or we have no speedy. True RMS digital multimeter or a regular one. Karate or Kung Fu. But you know what? All of them are great depending on the purpose they were made for. And today we will try to help you decide which oscilloscope is better for you. First, let me introduce you to our guest today. This is the XDS 3064AE, a full channel digital oscilloscope from Owen. It has a 60 MHz bandwidth, it can take up to 1 Giga samples per second, and has a high resolution ADC with 14 bits. Well, the slim design enables it to fit easily on your desk, and as you can see, the H in touchscreen increases your productivity. The XDS series oscilloscopes can be enhanced with the optional functional generator, a multimeter and a Wi-Fi module. With this communication solution you can achieve a one-to-one -one experimental project teaching feature and improve class efficiency. Moreover, there is a place for a lithium battery module that makes field and floating measurements possible. If you order the oscilloscopes from TMEU, you also get 1 and 10 passive probes, mains cable, USB cable, software and the user's manual. Additionally, you can purchase a soft carrying bag for your field trips. So now you know what to pay attention to when you're about to buy a new oscilloscope. You're welcome. No? Well, okay, so let's rewind and go back step by step. The most crucial information that you need to know is stamped right on the front of the oscilloscope. Guess what? Google is very proud of the number of search results it can provide in a short time, just like any scope manufacturer is, with this information stamped here. Number of channels. The more channels you have, the easier it is to observe how the signal is propagating through the circuit. It is easier to understand what is going on in the system. If you have four channels like here, make sure to use channels 1 and 3 first. The rule of thumb says that the oscilloscope can handle one-fifth of its bandwidth with ease. In this case, around 10 MHz. As you get closer to the maximum frequency, your signal is attenuated and at the peak, which means 60 MHz. The scope acts as a low-pass filter, which attenuates your signal by 3 decibels and affects the rise time. Here we have 1 giga samples per second. The sampling rate tells us about the number of measurements it can make in one second. The more active channels you have, the lower the sampling rate per channel. It is advised to have the sampling rate about five times higher than the signal frequency you're measuring. Each waveform that appears on the oscilloscope is represented with a number of samples and it is dependent on the sample rate and the total acquisition time. In other words, record length equals sample rate times wafer time. You can look at it as the battery capacity, which is consumption rate times working time. To extend the working time, you need to lower the consumption rate. Similarly here, if you want to extend the waveform, you need to reduce the sampling rate. But remember, the reducing the sampling rate will reduce signal accuracy. A 2000 point record time should be enough for a simple sinusoidal waveform. But the longer, the better. As already mentioned, this oscilloscope has 14 bits for vertical resolutions. The more bits there are, the more accurately you can measure low-level signals. But remember that oscilloscopes are more into viewing the signals. If you want to measure nanovolts, use a multimeter. Possibly you have already found an oscilloscope that answers all your needs depending on the features already mentioned. So now you can check the additional ones. For example, thanks to the battery, this Owen can measure the main voltage and it is mobile. I hope the points help you with selecting the one you actually need. And if you have a favorite oscilloscope or you want to tell us a story how you managed to destroy one, let us know in the comments.